Okay, welcome to the presentation explaining voltage and current. Um, cur uh, voltage is a an idea that I, I think a lot of people have difficulty understanding and I'll spend basically nearly all the time explaining and talking about uh, voltage. Okay, so ask yourself this question. Which cup of water has the most potential energy, and I mean gravitational potential energy? Okay, so if you thought about this for some time, you'd probably come to the conclusion that this club cup has more potential energy okay uh, than this cup if you connected them by pipe which way would the water move so if you think about this I think most people would be able to recognize that the water is not going to move apart from maybe some diffusion but um, the water won't flow this way or that way uh, alright so which cup has the most potential energy now? Obviously this cup has the most potential energy. Okay, and if I was to connect them by a pipe again, which way would the water move? In this example, the water's going to move this way. Um, so you can see that just looking at the amount of potential energy that the water has got from this cup to this cup, isn't that useful in predicting which direction the water will flow? In the previous example, um, one cup had more potential energy than the other and the water didn't flow in this example um, the same situation again, one's got more potential energy than the other but the water does flow so let's think about something different Okay, which cup of water has the most potential energy per litre this time so if you think about this cup and this cup and if you do think about this carefully you'll see that it's a trick question they're both going to be the same if one litre of this water has got 10 joules, for every litre it's got, it will have 10 joules. And the height of the water is what's going to determine the amount of energy per litre. The other cup would also have the same amount of energy per litre. Yes, this has more total energy, but per litre they have the same energy. And this is more useful because it will predict which way the water will flow. In this case, the potential energy per litre here is the same as the potential energy per litre here, and there is no difference in potential energy per litre, so there's no flow or no current of water. Okay, so let's think about this. Which one has the most potential energy per litre? Well, this one is going to have the most potential energy per litre and the most potential energy total. So we think that each of these litres here has 10 joules. I mean, I'm, the numbers are just made up. Um, but in the taller glass, each litre of water has got more joules of energy, more joules of potential energy. So there is a potential energy difference between this cup and this cup per litre. Right. So the water would flow from this cup to this cup. So potential energy per litre, or joules per litre, is more useful for predicting which way the water will flow. I think you can also see that if we made this cup taller and taller and taller and filled it up, um, the bigger the potential difference, or the difference in energy between this cup and this cup, the faster the water would flow as well, uh, or the higher the number of litres per second you would get. Okay, so that what we're doing is building an analogy that we can now take and look at electricity with. Let's continue building the analogy, okay? So, in this example now, we're going to take water from this cup and put it in this cup. Now, if I was to do this manually, I'd have to do work on the water. I'm lifting the water up and putting it at a higher height. This cup has now gained some energy per litre. The joules, uh, sorry, the litres of water in this cup have got more joules each uh, than this cup. And again, if we connected them by pipe, we could see that the water would flow this way, from the high potential energy per litre to the low potential energy per litre. Okay, so we learned in the previous video that matter is made up of positive and negative charges. So here's some stuff, and here's another piece of stuff. And we can only see the positive charges at the moment, so we better uh, neutralize them, make them balanced. And stuff comes usually uncharged. Here's, here we have uh, an uncharged object and another uncharged object. And I could do a similar thing. I could take some charges, or some liters of water, from this sphere, and do some work on them. And it would be difficult to pull them off away from the positive charges they're attracted to and force them into an area of higher negative charge. 
Now, all the charges in here have gained some potential energy. They all want to kind of jump off the ball uh, or escape. And if you could give them a, an option to escape, they would. So we've gained some potential energy. There's a now a difference in potential energy between this sphere and this sphere. Um, if we continued doing this for some time and took all the charges off, um, and then we'd have a very negatively charged sphere and a very positively charged sphere. Okay, And you could think of it that um, the charges on here have gained some potential energy. All of them have gained some potential energy. Now if I bring in something uh, to connect the two rods, like a piece of metal, which again would be neutrally charged to start with, so it would be made of positive and negative charges. Okay, so we can see the negative charges, but they're covering up the positive charges. Now the good thing about metal is it doesn't hold on to its electrons too tightly. So all these squashed up electrons here can shove along and push those electrons out onto the other side. And what we had briefly was a flow of charge. And a flow of charge is what we call a current. So we had a difference in potential energy and when that uh, these two spheres, where there was a difference in potential energy, were connected by um, a, a, a piece of metal or a piece of conducting wire, um, that potential difference in energy uh, created a current. So what voltage actually is, is the difference in potential energy per coulomb of charge. Okay, now we haven't said coulombs before, um, but when we thought about the water, we talked about litres of water, we didn't talk about molecules of water. It makes a lot of sense in day to li day life to talk about um, litres of water. You know, my, my bath fills at a rate of 10 litres per minute. And that makes sense, I can actually work it out. If you told me my bath fills at a rate of a billion billion water molecules per second, I wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about. And, and similarly, the coulomb is just uh, just like a litre. It just means lots of charges. It's a big number. It, it's not important to actually know what that number is uh, at this stage of our understanding. So, um, voltage is just the amount of potential energy per coulomb of charge. Voltage and potential difference mean the same thing. At the moment there's no potential difference between these two spheres and if we ripped some electrons off and shoved them on this side, did some work on them, they would, the, the electrons on this side would have gained some energy, so each coulomb of charge would have more energy on this side than on this side, then there would be a difference. Voltage is defined as the amount of work done in joules per coulomb. So volts could be written as just joules per coulomb, joule stroke coulomb as the, as the unit. Current we've briefly talked about as well is just how fast the stuff is moving, the charges that are moving. So uh, current is just measured in the number of coulombs per second, just like you might say water is measured in, uh, the flow of water is measured in litres per second. Okay, so I've tried to uh, explain the difference between voltage and current. Um, it is a difficult concept, and it might be worth maybe um, going over it, uh, going over this video again. Uh, if you're a key stage three student, it's sufficient, it's enough to think of voltage as just being maybe how much push the electrons are being given by the cell or battery. Um, if you're a more advanced student, it's you, you know you should really be trying to uh, trying to really absorb this this information and, and uh, build your model uh, in your head of how voltage and current are related. Okay, so I, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe, like, and share.